Assalamualaikum everyone. I hope today's lesson finds you well. Today we will be going to discuss vitamin B9 that is also said to be the folate and folic acid. So before starting further, first we need to discuss what's the difference between the folate and the folic acid. Folate word is derived from the Greek word that is said to be folium and it means leaf. So vitamin B9 in the form of folate is a natural one that is derived from the green leafy vegetables. And when we talk about the folic acid, it is a synthetic form of the vitamin B9. Folate is bioavailable to the 50% extent, while the folic acid is bioavailable to 100% extent. It is due to their structural differences. If you are going to talk about the vitamin B9 structure, it consists of the three parts, tyrandine, para benzoic acid and glutamate. The synthetic form of the vitamin B9, that is folic acid, contains only one molecule of the glutamate. But when we talk about the folate, it consists of more number of the glutamate. The natural form of vitamin B9, that is folate, has to be converted into monoglutamate form in order to get absorbed from the intestine. Once it absorbs from the intestine, it leads to the liver for further metabolism. So let's talk about the function of the vitamin B9. It is actually involved in the one carbon metabolism reactions. It means it's going to donate the carbon atom to a substance so a new substance can be formed. It's a very simple thing you can remember. So in order to get the capability of the donation of carbon atoms, first folate has to get some of the functional group containing the one carbon atoms. And those functional groups can be derived from specific type of the amino acid that may be serine, glycine, histamine and tryptophan. These specific forms of amino acid donate one carbon units in the form of methyl, formyl, methylene and methanyl. As folate gets its one carbon units from the amino acid, now it's capable to derive some of the important cycles that is said to be the folate cycle and the another cycle that is interlinked to this particular type of cycle is said to be the methionine cycle. These two cycles are very important because the intermediate products that are formed in these two cycles are necessary for the formation of the DNA and uh, even red blood cells and it is also very important to maintain the uh, cardiovascular system sound. So we came to know that folate is very essential for DNA synthesis, amino acid metabolism, red blood cell synthesis and important for maintainers of the cardiovascular systems. Now let's talk about how it is involved in the DNA synthesis. So when it comes to folate, folate is involved in the formation of the DNA bases and you know that without them DNA function can be compromised. So uh, folate is involved in the uh, formation of the purines and the pyrimidines and we are going to see how it is uh, uh, formed the pyrimidine and the purines. So let's see how folate is involved in the pyrimidine synthesis. You need to keep in mind one thing that the this cycle is initiated only when the folate gains this one carbon unit from the amino acid sources that we have discussed earlier. For simplification and better understanding, I have minimized that cycle and only focus that particular type of substance that is involved in the pyramidine synthesis. So through the folate cycle, a substance is obtained that is said to be the 510 methylene tetrahydrofolate. Again, uh, important thing to remember that the tetrahydrofolate is the active form of the vitamin B9, which continuously regulated uh, in the folate cycle and uh, gains and donates the one carbon unit. So here it's also uh, donating a one carbon unit in the form of the methylene. So what actually happens, the thymidase synthase donates the methylene group from the 510 methylene tetrahydrofolate to the DUMP and the DUMP converted into the DTMP. DUMP is the deoxyuridine monophosphate and it eventually converted into the uh, DTMP that is the uh, deoxythymidine monophosphate and it's a pyrimidine base of the DNA and this base there further is involved in the formation of the DNA. Now let's see how folate is involved in the formation of purines. So if tetrahydrofolate gets its one carbon unit from the tryptophan, it may convert into the other form that is the 10 form of tetrahydrofolate. And this particular substance involved in the formation of the purines. And how it becomes the purine? It becomes the carbon number 2 and carbon number 8 of the purines. You need to remember one thing that the purines uses the de novo synthesis pathway for their formation. De novo synthesis actually 
the formation of the complex molecules by using the simpler ones and one of the simpler molecule uh, the simpler substance uh, the purine may get it from the folate cycle in the form of 10 formyl tetrahydrofolate now let's talk about some other function of the folate through the folate cycle uh, i have told you earlier that the uh, another important cycle is interlinked with the folate cycle that is said to be the methionine cycle and without the folate cycle this methionine cycle cannot be derived or cannot be initiated so what is actually happening over here folate uh, cycle if the folate cycle is initiated and important compound can be formed through the folate cycle that is the 5 methyl tetrahydrofolate and it is required by the homocysteine to convert into the methionine so as you can see in the methionine cycle homocysteine requires some of the components that are very important for its conversion and those components are vitamin b12 vitamin b9 in the form of 5 methyl tetrahydrofolate and methionine synthase and when all of these components are present then this conversion can uh, able to initiate even the uh, absence of the vitamin b12 are unable to continue this conversion uh, so once this conversion done well, i that is the conversion of homocysteine to the methionine the 5 methyl tetrahydrofolate can convert it back into its uh, uh, actual form that is the tetrahydrofolate and again it's ready for its uh, further regulation in the folate cycle methionine cycle is also very important it not only converts the homocysteine into the methionine by the help of the vitamin b9 but the uh, methionine can also by the help of some enzyme can be converted into an other very important compound that is said to be the s adenosyl methionine or also can be uh, said as sam this compound involves in number of methylation reactions uh, uh, for example methylation of dna methylation of phospholipids that is the uh, your uh, part of your cell membrane and that's how it uh, maintains the integrity of the dna and the uh, cell membrane so these pathways are very important because they are giving us some of the compounds that are involved in the formation of the purines or involved in uh, maintaining the normal functioning of heart and also involved in the maintaining the integrity of the dna and uh, cell membrane and it's only possible if the sufficient amount of folic acid or folate is present so folate is also involved in the amino acid metabolism by accepting their one carbon unit uh, one uh, form of amino acid can be converted into the other form for example most of the time folate uh, gets its one carbon unit from serine and serine can be converted into the glycine and you know that the glycine is involved in the formation of the heme and that's how uh, indirectly folate is also involved in the formation of the red blood cells uh, by the for, through the heme synthesis some other examples involved is the conversion of homocysteine into methionine that is essential for maintenance of your cardiovascular systems another is the conversion of tryptophan into n formal tetrahydrofolate uh, or the, here it is the folate accepts the one carbon unit from the tryptophan and make it to uh, n formal tetrahydrofolate that is involved in the formation of purines uh, i have discussed in the earlier slides dietary requirements for both uh, adult male and female is 400 microgram per day and for expecting women it is raised up to the 600 micrograms per day some of good sources of vitamin b9 is liver leafy vegetables legumes and fortified cereals but the problem is vitamin b9 or folate is very sensitive to the heat so most of the time food processing may wipe up the levels of the vitamin b9 from the food so in that case either the food going to be fortified or a person may depends on some supplements to gain is the daily requirements now let's see what are the diseases associated with the deficiency of the vitamin b9 so i have mentioned two of the pronounced diseases due to the b9 deficiency one is the microcytic anemia and other one is the spina bifida in microcytic anemia what happens the cell may becomes large you know that the vitamin b9 is also involved in the formation of dna so if the levels going to drop uh, it may alters the formation of dna and in this case uh, the cell may unable to replicate properly and continue to become large and in size which may lead to the anemic condition due to the uh, seized uh, replication pathway and this particular type of anemia is considered to be the microcytic anemia 
and other disease that is the spina bifida or also referred as neural tube defect is associated with a newborn baby if newborn's mother is deficient of vitamin b9 at the time of pregnancy what happen in this disease a dome like structure is formed at the back of the baby containing the uh, neural fluid because in the early stages of pregnancy the first thing is formed is the neural tube in the embryo and it involves the replication of the cells so if the mother is deficient of the vitamin b9 the replication of the cells is altered because the vitamin b9 is involved in the dna synthesis so if dna is unable to synthesize properly it will eventually affect the replication of the cell so this if the replication is going to affect then there will there is a chance that the neural tube have some spores or pore in it uh, due to the altered replication of the cell and through which the neural fluid going to be seeps out and that's all for today hope you like the video till then allah hafiz